Um, seems like we've all been to the British School at Rome, so there's a connection we <laughs> can talk about. You haven't yet, but you're about going to be. So, okay. Um, just very quickly, I'm going to start with some, some work that, that I made um, quite a while before my PhD, just to give a bit of background. Um, and I was working with um, paintings that were dealing with ideas about memory, quite simply, either personal, from a personal point of view, or a kind of historical, archival point of view. And I was thinking a lot about the genre of painting, so particularly still life, landscape, history painting, and the kind of hierarchies that um, were, had been established um, way back in, in terms of uh, those genres. And I was obviously also looking at the relationship between photography and painting, ideas about the indexical um, in painting. Um, but then I started to work with digital imaging and, um, and I wanted to think about the implications that the digital had for, for painting, both in, uh, both in terms of the temporal and the spatial. And this, this was really the investigation that, that led to the PhD. Um, I started with a research proposition, which um, bore in mind the fact that, that a lot of the critical thinking around painting um, had been preoccupied with the photographic and with ideas about um, return, Freudian return and mourning and so on. Um, and I, I suppose I wanted to move away from that and I thought that um, digital imaging as, a, as a, um, a process of drawing and of thinking might open that up a bit for me and I also wanted to investigate the, uh, the way in which the, the sort of implications for time in, in practice might be influenced by people like Proust and Bergson and the actual virtual um, and the Deleuzean theme which uh, it seems rather cliched nowadays actually but it didn't quite seem so at the time. Um, so yeah, those, that, was, that was where I was really coming from. So the text that I was referring to, they became narrowed down to a few, a few from Deleuze, a thousand plateaus, but also um, cinema, the cinema text, particularly the time image, the second text, and, and Marcel Proust's wonderful, um, very long novel, which some of you may know. And um, so the notion from Proust's, um, sorry, from Deleuze's books on cinema, of the crystal image became quite important. Probably haven't got time to go into that too much, but but um, you'll see as I as I continue that the, th the thing that started to really interest me was the idea of um, juxtaposition, and fragmentation, and um, multiplicity, which is obviously something very very central in general to Deleuze and the crystal image. So the other and the thing that the thing that struck me about Proust novel was that it, not only is it a wonderful novel but it's also a theory of time and a, in, in some ways a theory of knowledge so that became really those those texts became really central to the project and some of the questions that I was dealing with um, I just I've just introduced a few here I was thinking about what characterizes time in painting and how we might be able to think time through painting. And secondly, um, how specific models of conceptualizing time, and as I've mentioned, particularly Proust and Deleuze, might inform painting as a practice. And thirdly, how could working with the digital image expand painting's topography in some way, which I, I, I suppose I felt it did, but I, I needed to make an argument for that. Um, and one of the key ideas early on was this notion of the distinction between the haptic and the optic, which was introduced, I think, at the beginning of the 20th century by Alois Regel, who, who devised um, categories of form in order, these, these two categories of form, in order to sort of differentiate varying relations of, of mind and object. So um, the haptic um, deals with 
the sense of, of touch, but not actually, but through, through vision, and um, a, a sense of nearness, so you're surrounded, almost you're within the image, uh, very close to it, um, whereas the optic has a, a sense of distance to it, a kind of uh, perspective and a, a, a notion of objects in space. So those, those ideas were important, and they connected with Deleuze and Guattari's concepts in the Thousand Plateaus of smooth space and striated space. So the haptic relates to smooth space. Um, and I can't see my, <laughs> my slides on here, they're tiny. Uh, so yeah, open and unlimited in every direction. That, that's uh, the way, one of the ways in which Deleuze describes smooth space. And um, that he also equates the opposite, the striated space, with, with the optic. So um, produces and orders a succession of distinct forms. Um, so I was looking a lot at films, film stills, and particularly this film by um, Tarkovsky called Stalker, that many of you will probably know. Um, and this, the, the, the notions of space that, that, that develop in Stalker, in the, in the zone um, where the, the action takes place, which is an extraordinary place where, where the usual rules of time and space don't apply. So there's a kind of non-linear sense of time. Um, and very much a, a feeling of discontinuity and uh, the notion of detour is really important and those things seem to, to me to chime with the ways in which practice operates, the way in which you, you move through a space in your, your practice that usually involves many detours. Um, I was also looking at Chardin's paintings and he was very interested in the optical theories of the, of the day, of the 18th century, notions of distinctness of vision and um, what he called a new sort of momentariness. And I think these things relate very closely to this idea of the haptic. And as you see in this particular painting, The Skate, you have this sense of the, the interior of the body coming out um, into, into the exterior. So the, the, there are interesting links there, I think. So I started working with um, dig on digital drawings that um, juxtaposed various spaces. So I, I began with objects on a tabletop, as in the very first slide I showed you. Um, and then I transformed those through lots of manipulations to become these sort of landscapes, these sort of slightly unreal landscapes. And they, that linked with this um, sense of the, the idea of the zone in, in, in uh, Tarkovsky's film. So there's a kind of slippage, uh, there's a very fluid space in the digital obviously, and multiple linkages are, are enabled. Um, another point of reference was this um, wonderful image by Giotto of hell, and you, you see here the, the sort of the background rises up onto the surface of the image. Um, and Dorothea Olkowski wrote about this, this work in, in relation to Deleuze's thinking. Um, saying that it, that it represented a, a collapse of hierarchized space, so it was like a world without a point of view. Um, and this, this, I thought this was really interesting and wanted to try to think about this, not just spatially, but in terms of time it, in the painting, so that the idea of haptic time started to emerge. And I made a series of quite large paintings called Zone, which really played with this, the fact that displacement and montage and appropriation were, are, are really intrinsic to the digital field and, and um, working digitally with an image allows you to sort of rethink that image and manipulate it in all sorts of ways. So, you know, here I'm still working with essentially a still life image to begin with, but importing other elements, film stills and... Uh, drawings and various other sources into the surface to create this kind of landscape. 
Um, and in 2005, I worked with Rebecca on, on a project at um, Lancaster University, which was called Visual Intelligences. And I made this painting and documented every single stage of the process. That was then transformed into a, a digital animation. So the whole making of the painting lasted a minute in, in the animation. It was quite a strange experience for me, but it, it was interesting because it, was, it, it seemed to somehow represent this notion that I was starting to develop about haptic time because it was a very compressed and quite strange uh, sense of time that developed. Um, also, I made a, a digitally interactive work that was shown alongside the painting, so you could click on different areas of the painting and find out more about the uh, process and the source material and um, the reading that I was doing. So 